One of the main mechanics in Pokemon is evolution. You meet a certain requirement and your Pokemon gets stronger. Generally, it's pretty straightforward, usually just having to reach a certain level before your precious team member will evolve. However, it's not always that simple, for some Pokemon require some other methods. The first different evolution method most people will probably think of is stone evolutions, where using a stone will cause your Pokemon to evolve. Originally, there was only five stones, fire, water, thunder, leaf, and moon. But as the series progressed, more were added. Gen 2 gave us the sunstone, Gen 4 giving the dusk, dawn, and shiny stones, and Gen 7 giving the ice stone. These are the most generalized evolution items in the series. They all work on multiple Pokemon, and most of them continually get new Pokemon that make use of them. The only exception being the Dawnstone, which was introduced in Gen 4, only allows for gender-specific branch evolutions for Curlia and Snowrun. Next up is trade evolutions. Dating all the way back to the original games, trade evolutions are simply evolutions triggered by trading, which means you either need to have multiple consoles and games to get access to these Pokemon, or maybe you even have to find some friends. As a solo player, these are not very friendly evolutions, and thus can be very annoying if you can't let your Pokemon reach their full potential. In case trading evolutions weren't annoying enough, in Gen 2, they introduced trade evolutions requiring held items. As the series continued, they would sometimes add new evolutions for older Pokemon, and so to keep up the lore as to why these Pokemon weren't accessible in previous generations, a whole bunch of new items are introduced, which makes these trade evolutions even more annoying. The ones introduced in Gen 2 have the benefit of some being used as proper held items as well, such as the King's Rock and the Metal Coat. Not only do these items actually serve other purposes, but they can be used to evolve two Pokemon each. However, items like the Dragon Scale and Upgrade only serve the purpose of allowing for trade evolutions and only being used for exclusively one Pokemon. When Gen 3 rolled around, they introduced Clam Pearl, which has not one, but two item-dependent trade evolutions. Both of the items, the Deep Sea Scale and the Deep Sea Tooth, do grant bonuses when held by Clam Pearl, but only Clam Pearl. Generation 4 onwards, every single item-based trade evolution requires an item used exclusively for a single Pokemon, leading to the existence of the Protector, the Electrorizer, the Magmarizer, the Dubious Disc, the Reaper Cloth, the Sashet, and the Whip Dream. There are so many items that exist solely to evolve one Pokemon via trading, all to like give a reason why these evolutions weren't accessible in older games. It's definitely interesting in the lore department, but as a mechanic, it's annoying as hell. Generation 2 also introduced what might be the number one most annoying evolution method, friendship. Friendship is an invisible stat that determines how close you and your Pokemon are. There are multiple ways to raise and lower your friendship, and on paper isn't the worst inclusion. However, when it comes to evolutions requiring a certain amount of friendship, for most situations, it either boils down to have a weak Pokemon for far too long waiting to naturally fill up the friendship, or spend 30 minutes or so biking back and forth just to get it done and over with. It does not help that like half the list of Pokemon that evolve with friendship are baby Pokemon, which are exceptionally weak. Not even all baby Pokemon need friendship. A good few can evolve just by level up, so it's not like a blanket thing for them. There's surely people that like this method, and that's fine. However, I personally see it as one of my most hated fluffers in gaming, forced waiting. I will say there's an evolution line that uses the feature and it works fine, and that's the Zubat line. Zubat evolves into Golbat via level up, with Golbat needing friendship to become Crobat. So if you catch one as a Zubat, most of the friendship grinding will be done while just leveling towards Golbat allowing for that random surprise of friendship evolution to still happen, but in a far smaller level gap. Now, there's like an extra requirement that can be added on to Pokemon that evolve via level up or with friendship, and that's requiring the time of day as well. That's right, it's entirely possible you can keep leveling up a Pokemon and it'll just never evolve, because you just play at the wrong time. Some Pokemon require it to be day, some night, and even some require specific times like dusk. I wouldn't classify this as its own method, just an add-on requirement for other methods. Although, what I would classify as its own method is the Pokemon that evolve by holding a specific item and leveling up at a specific time. If Gligar holds the Razor Fang and levels up at night, it will evolve. Jotonian Sneasel can evolve while leveling up and holding the Razor Claw at night, and Hapini holding the Oval Stone during the day. Probably the most interesting one, as it's most likely due to Chansey already evolving into Blissey with Friendship. Continuing with new methods of evolution to explain why an old Pokemon can now evolve, is needing to know a specific move. This is hands down the best form of this like lore protection. No bay cluttering, no big search for a specific item, just gotta learn a new move. Tangela, Yanma, and Piloswine all evolve after learning ancient power. Lickitung with Rollout, Mime Jr. and Bonsly with Mimic, Apom with Double Hit, Steeny with Stomp, Poipool with Dragon Pulse, Clobopus with Taunt, Girafferig with Twin Beam, and Dunsparce with Hyper Drill. A varied list, and while it may need some looking up to learn how to evolve your Pokemon, feels far more in your control. Even more so with keeping the lore intact, we come to location-based evolutions. These require you to bring a specific Pokemon to a specific location and level up to evolve. 
The most popular examples of this would be the mossy rock and the icy rock, allowing for Eevee to evolve into Leafeon and Glaceon respectively. There's also Magneton, Nosepass, and Charger Bug that require a magnetic field type area to evolve, and Crab Brawler needs an icy area. These are annoying, especially the icy ones, as those areas are usually pretty late game. Now, this is one Game Freak must have realized that just wasn't it, so starting in Gen 8, all location based evolutions were changed into stone evolutions. Mossy areas became leaf stone, icy areas became ice stones, and magnetic areas became thunderstones. However, due to Dexit, it led to an interesting situation where due to Nosepass not being in Sword and Shield and receiving the update, Nosepass still required the magnetic field to evolve in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but then got access to the Thunderstone evolution only a couple months later in Legends Arceus. BDSP also don't have Ice Stones due to it only being as an extra evolution method for Galician. Winding down a little, we have gender-based evolutions. We touched on this a little earlier with the Dawnstone, but there's some Pokemon that only need to level up, like Combi and Solandit. Both can be either male or female, but only the female ones are able to evolve. There's also Burmy, which evolves into Mothim if male and Wormadam if female. Burmy is also an interesting one as it can change form based on the last environment it was in, and whatever form it is in when it evolves into Wormadam, it will keep that form permanently. While talking about evolution forms based on environments, we have regional evolutions. If a Pokemon that doesn't have a regional form can evolve into a Pokemon that does have one, such as Coughing being able to evolve into Cantonian or Galarian Weezing, the evolution is based on what region the Pokemon is currently in. So going back to coughing, if it's in Galar, it'll become a Galarian Weezing, but everywhere else it'll just be plain Cantonian Weezing. From here on out, evolution methods are going to start getting a little bit more weird, a little bit more specific, and so the pacing might get a little nutty. In the more recent titles, there have been new items introduced that work very similarly to evolution stones. However, they are all each exclusive to a single Pokemon, so let's take a look at them. Galarian Slowpoke evolves into Galarian Slowbro with the Galarica Cuff, and into Galarian Slowking with the Galarica Wreath. To obtain these items, you must collect Galarica twigs and have them fashioned into either item. Charcadet has two evolutions, but requiring a different item, you have to give it. In Pokemon Scarlet, you can trade 10 bronze or fragments for the auspicious armor to evolve Charcadet into Armor Rouge, while in Pokemon Violet, you can trade 10 Sinistee chips for the malicious armor, allowing for you to get Seralu Edge. Sinistee has two forms, Phony and Antique. Both these forms require different evolution items, as the Phony form requires the Cracked Pot to evolve, while the Antique form requires the Chipped Pot to evolve. Following up, we have the very similar Polchegeist which has a counterfeit form and an artisan form. The counterfeit form requires the unremarkable teacup to evolve into unremarkable form Sinistra, while the artisan form needs the masterpiece teacup to evolve into masterpiece form Sinistra. Duraludon can make use of the metal alloy to evolve into Archaludon. This one is pretty redundant, as they could have really just used the metal coat, but no, for reasons. Next up on the list is Applin. Applin is a special fella as it has three evolutions, all requiring a different item. If you use the tart apple, you will get Flapple, and the sweet apple will get you Appleton. These were the original two evolutions for this little guy. However, in Gen 9, you can get the Syrupy Apple, which will allow you to get Diplin. All is cool and well. Well, except for the fact that Diplin can also evolve. If Diplin levels up while knowing the new move Dragon Cheer, it will evolve into Hydra Apple. So this Pokemon had two item-based evolutions, got a third one that could also evolve further. Also to note, could have totally used Dragon Cheer Evo for Duraludon as well. Believe now would be a good time to talk about Legends Arceus. This game doesn't have held items, so how does it deal with all the evolutions that require held items? It just lets them act like evolution stones which is a lifesaver for trade evolutions. Not only do they allow for you to evolve the held item trade evos without trading, for the ones that require only trading and no held item, we have the newly introduced linking cord. This item looks suspiciously like a Game Boy Link cable, allows you to evolve the Pokemon that normally require just the standard trade evolutions. Actual revolutionary item, especially with the changes to the held item trade evolutions. But unfortunately, so far, it has only been in effect for Legends Arceus. The linking cord has only been seen in Pokemon Sleep of all places since. Important to note that this trait also carries over to the level up while holding an item evolutions, and is also how you get Sneasler, as you have to use a Razor Claw during the day. The Land of Hisui also introduced some new evolution items, such as the Black Augurite used to evolve Cypher into Cleaver. Nice and simple. Our next evolution, however, is not. Ursaluna. Now to evolve your Ursaring into Ursaluna, you need to use the Peat Block on it. But wait, it also has to be night. But wait again, it has to be specifically a full moon. Well, that's about it for evolution items. There's still some weird methods for the Hisui Pokemon. To get weirder, you must use the move Sight Shield Bash 20 times, specifically in the Agile style with your Sandler. This isn't a one-off either. As to evolve Hisui and Quillfish, you must use Barb Barrage 20 times in Strong Style. These are just kind of annoying. They seem to have decided that as well, as for when Hisui and Quillfish appeared in the Scarlet and Violet DLC, they changed its evolution to just requiring it to know the move Barb Barrage to be able to evolve. There's also White Stripe Basculin, which in order to evolve, requires it to take 294 HP and recoil damage. If you want to try any of the new Pokemon in Legends Arceus, you really gotta work for it. Like, holy shit, these are some oddballs. But yet, there's even still more to come. We are now entering the really, truly weird stuff. Tyrogue, one of those baby Pokemon introduced in Gen 2. Becoming a baby that evolves into Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan from Gen 1, officially connecting those two, as well as adding Hitmontop into the mix. Now, how do we determine how our little Tyrogue is going to evolve? Why, yes, it's with stats. 
If Tyrogue's attack is higher than its defense, upon reaching level 20 it will evolve into Hitmonlee. If it's the reverse and the defense is higher than attack, you get Hitmonchan. To get Hitmontop, you gotta make sure both attack and defense are equal. Which with stuff like IVs, EVs, and natures, it's not always going to be the easiest thing to manage. Speaking on babies, in Gen 4, Mantyke got a baby called Mantyke. And how do you evolve Mantyke? Well obviously it's by having a Remoraid in your party. Sure it's a reference to how the Mantine sprite has a Remoraid in it, except Gen 4 got rid of that. You also don't lose the Remoraid or anything, it just kind of needs to be there for support or something. Our next one, not that weird in method, but in result. Morpul, it can evolve into either Silcoon or Cascoon, entirely at random. It's determined by strings of codes you cannot see, and cannot be influenced. So if you're looking for a specific outcome, it's entirely possible it'll take you a few tries. Speaking on Gen 3 bugs, there's an Ankeda. Upon reaching level 20, this little bug will evolve into Ninjask. Nice and straightforward. However, if you have an empty slot in your party and a spare Pokeball, you also get Shedinja. Ninkata turns into two Pokemon, the second one being entirely missable. Don't really have qualms with it, it's just weird. Moving along, we have Feebas. Now Feebas is special, for it has not one, but two evolution methods, both leading to Milotic. Originally, Feebas evolved only by having a high beauty stat. However, due to contests not being in every entry, they eventually needed to come up with a new method to achieve evolution, which gave birth to the Prism Scale. The Prism Scale gives Feebas a held item trade evolution. That's right, they wanted to make sure it was still at least a little bit of a pain in the ass to evolve. So now if a game has contests, you can raise Feebas' beauty stat and do it the old fashioned way, and if it doesn't, you gotta find an item and trade it. For a fun little break, let's talk about Eevee. Eevee has a whopping 8 different evolutions you can choose from, using a wide variety of evolution methods. We have already mentioned how the location based Leafeon Glaceon has been changed to stone based evolutions, but that's not the first time it's had a method changed. In Pokemon XD, your starter is an Eevee, and in that game, well, it didn't have a day and night cycle, so the devs had to get a little bit creative. And so we got the Sun Shard and the Moon Shard. These items just stayed in the player's bag, and having one would allow an Eevee with high friendship to evolve into Espeon with the Sun Shard and Umbreon with the Moon Shard. This also consumes the item. This spin-off game not only has an exclusive evolution method for Eevee, but is also like a precursor to the held item level up evolutions that we'd see just one generation later. And that's not even all for this line, as there's Sylveon which has its own really unique evolution method of requiring two hearts of affection as well as needing to know a fairy move. It can never be something easy with these mons. Also, since the affection system eventually got folded into the friendship system, Sylveon basically just became a third friendship evolution for Eevee, with its determining factor being the fairy move, so now Espeon and Embryon have the requirement of not knowing a fairy move. It's amazing that the original three are the only ones that haven't had some kind of change made along the way for their evolution. With our little Eevee detour over, let's get back to it. Carablast and Shelmet. These guys both have trade evolutions. However, there's a bit of a catch. They have to be traded for each other. That's right, to evolve your Carablast, you have to trade it for a Shelmet. This makes sense looking at the designs, as it's like Carablast took Shelmet's armor, but it's just super specific and requires extra coordination with multiple systems to achieve this evolution. We've had location-specific evolutions, we've had time-based evolutions, but Sligu, both Kalosian and Hisuian, require some weather to evolve. Get Gudra, you have to level up Sligu in the rain starting at level 50. Now setting rain in battle won't help you here, you have to find some natural, true rain occurring. In the older games, there's usually a route that's always raining, but in the modern age, nah, it's all a waiting game. Remember Mantyke, how it needed that support from Remoraid to evolve? Well, our next contestant, Pancham, is a little bit similar. However, instead of needing a specific Pokemon in the party, you just need a Dark-type Pokemon. This one also makes more sense as Pancham gets the Dark-type upon evolving, so it's like the Dark-type Pokemon is coursing Pancham to get a little bit of that darkness in him. Now, while there's been a whole lot of methods mentioned so far, all of them have been purely in-game mechanics. What if you had to physically do something to achieve evolution? Well, that's where our friend Inke comes in. Inke will evolve starting at level 30, but only if you hold the console upside down. You have to physically move your console to achieve this evolution. It was pretty cool back in the day. Talking about physically moving, there's an evolution that's exclusive to Pokemon Go. Meltan, the mythical Pokemon first introduced in Go, can evolve into Melmetal with 400 candies. At face value, seems normal, not much different from the likes of Magikarp. However, you can only evolve Meltan in Go. If you transfer it to home, it is forever stuck as a Meltan. They may change this one day in the future if Go eventually succeeds in killing itself, but for now, you better get cash in if you want that Mel Metal. So we've talked about mythical evolution. How about some legendary evolutions? Gen 7 introduced us to Cosmog, who will evolve into Cosmoem at level 43. All fine and dandy, but things get weird once you go to evolve it into the box art legendary at 53. It makes sense in Sun and Moon, it evolves to match the legend on the box. However, in future games, they kept this version exclusive evolution instead of making it something simpler like being time-based given it's from the Sun and Moon games. But yeah, Cosmoem in Sun, Ultra Sun, Sword, and Scarlet will get you Solgaleo, while evolving in Moon, Ultra Moon, Shield, and Violet will get you Lunala. This isn't our only legendary evolution, however, as the Kings of Weird Evolutions, Sword and Shield, introduce Kubfu in the Isle of Armor DLC. In Gen 8, to evolve Kubfu, you have to bring it to the top of either the Tower of Darkness or the Tower of Waters and interact with a hanging scroll. To access these areas, you have to progress through the story, 
and will reach a point where you have to choose one of the two towers to access, the one you don't choose becoming completely inaccessible on that save file. The game forces you to lock in the ability of getting one of the two forms. In Gen 9, however, since the towers are no longer present, the Scroll of Darkness and the Scroll of Waters are now key items you can obtain to evolve Cub Fu. No more choosing which evolution to unlock, as you can get both in a single save. While on the topic of Sword and Shield, let's finish off the weird evolutions they introduced. First up is Toxel, a new baby Pokemon they introduced that evolves into Toxtricity. Toxtricity has two forms, and the forms you get is dependent on nature. This isn't some big weird thing, but it's just a little neat idea. I like it. It's it's cool. It's whatever. Galarian Farfetch is probably more annoying than weird. As to evolve into Surfetched, you need to land three critical hits in a single fight. While it does get high crit rate moves, and the league is still around boosting the line's crit chance, it is still down to RNG. Surfetched is really cool though, so it's worth it. For our next evolution, we get to play Spindlewin. Milsery, this little gloob of a Pokemon, evolves into Elcremie. The Pokemon with a whopping 63 forms. How do you determine the form you get? Well, it's quite simple. First, you give your pal Milsery one of seven sweets to hold, and then you spin. Depending on how long you spin, what direction you spin, and what time of day you decide to spin, will determine what appearance it takes on. Having a whole nine different varieties, collecting all of these are a pain, I can tell you from experience. Last and definitely not least, we come to Galarian Yamask, probably the most user-friendly evolution of all time. You have to take 49 damage in battle, without fainting, and walk under some rock in the Dusty Bowl region of the wild area. Super simple. This is the game that removed location-based evolutions, and they decided to throw this one in there. Just some true real deal random bullshit evolution that sounds like some playground rumor. Galarian Yamask also hasn't been in a game since Sword and Shield so we have no clue how its evolution will work outside of Galar. This is one of the evolutions that inspired this video, as I've been in awe over how fucking dumb it is since the game launched. With Sword and Shield finished, all we have left is the random methods added in Scarlet and Violet. First up, we have new evolutions for old Pokemon, and unlike Giraffe, Rig, and Dunsparce, they need more than just learning a new move. Primeape, in order to evolve into Annihilate, not only needs to learn a new move, Rage Fist, but also has to use it a minimum of 20 times. Feels a tad excessive, I'm not gonna lie. Bisharp, on the other hand, is a bit different. To evolve your Bisharp into King Gamut, you have to defeat three Bisharp holding the Leader's Crest item with your own Bisharp. That's just odd. Thankfully, it's not super random, as Bisharp that spawn with a horde of Ponyard usually will be holding the item. The weirdest thing about this evolution is that it feels more like a regional evolution. Stuff like Galarian Yamask are annoying and may not transfer over to other regions, but it's a Galar specific form. All Bisharp, no matter what, can evolve into King Gambit. And depending on how future games may handle spawns or whatever other factor needed here, it may end up overly complicating the process. With the introduction of the Let's Go mode in Scarlet and Violet, came a set of Pokemon that evolved through it. Palmo, Reller, and Bramlin all evolve after taking 1,000 steps in the Let's Go mode. They basically took what was the optimal way of dealing with friendship evolutions and made it its own whole method. Pomo also feels a bit tacked on compared to the other two, but in the end, it's just having to walk with your Pokemon for like 5-10 to 10 minutes and it's done. Just a weird little stepping stone. In Legends Arceus, they introduced ways to evolve trade evolution mons by yourself. So naturally, they had to introduce a new method that requires multiplayer. To evolve Finison into Palafin, you have to raise it to at least level 38 and level it up while playing multiplayer. That's right. The only way to evolve this Pokemon is to either join a friend or have a friend join you. It's like the same amount of annoyance as trade evolutions, needing to play multiplayer for like a minute to achieve its goal. It's just really bizarre. Our current final weird evolution method is Gimme Goal. It also might be my top contender for most annoying at this time, for to evolve it into Golden Go, you must level it up while having 999 Gimme Goal coins, and the coins are super annoying to collect, as you get them from defeating Chest Form Gimme Goal, which only spawn in set locations and respawn really slowly, or you have to track down Roaming Form Gimme Goal which is a pain in the ass as they are so hard to see most of the damn time. They also commonly give you like one or two coins, chests at least give a minimum of like 50. Both forms have a rare chance of dropping a whole lot of coins, but I think the most I've gotten personally was like 200 once from a chest form. It's not annoying when you only need to evolve one, but because all the coins are consumed upon evolution, and the stack max is at 999 so you can't hoard for multiple evolutions at once, Evolving multiple just becomes a massive headache. And well, there we have it. That should be every single evolution method in the series. A lot of them are just so annoying, especially with the more recent ones sounding more and more like the schoolyard rumors. And yet, I can't wait to see what they got cooking up for future titles. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. Would love to hear from you in the comments, even if it's just what your favorite and least favorite evolution methods are. As always, a like and a subscribe would be super appreciated, as it truly does help with the channel. This has been Big Blast 99 and I hope you all have yourselves a goddamn good one.